Namaste all. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to your practice. This is our Hatha Flow Practice Intermediate class. So always mindfully applying. Feel free to play around with your practice and approach challenges as the best you can, but no pressure, no force, always only working to the point that's within your comfortable limits. No fight for the practice. Before we begin this evening, I'd just like to extend a special thank you to all of you for tuning in. Uh, this marks 10 weeks of the classes. So thank you so much to all of you for connecting with your practice and creating space. A special thanks to anybody who's been supporting the classes or supporting the online content, whether it's been through a once-off donation or if you've elected to become a reoccurring patron. It's very much appreciated and it makes a tremendous difference, so thank you so much. You can also sh so show rather support for the classes through just sharing, just sharing, a page, sharing the group, sharing the classes, telling a friend so on and so forth. That's greatly appreciated. The beginner practice this evening, we will go through our Kapalavati. The rapid breath out through the nose. So it's a breath work where we focus on the exhale and it's a passive inhale. Just a quick note for anybody who may not have practiced before. Just being mindful that there's any vertigo or epilepsy, any heart conditions or, or high blood pressure or anything to do perhaps with pregnancy or early days of menstruation or any stomach issues to avoid this breath work and just witness the breath softly. Likewise, any issues with the back, that it may, if you have any acute issues with the back of the body through lower back and neck, avoiding this breath work practice at a later date, picking it up when all is well. To perform the breath is that forceful exhale out through the nose, that focused exhale out through the nose. You're actively drawing in through the lower abdominal and it's a passive inhale. So mindfully apply. In ordinary conditions, you wouldn't do it late in the evening. But just to energize before your practice, we'll just do two short rounds. We'll get settled in any case, so sitting comfortably, spine uplifted as best you can, adopting a mudra if you find that it's helpful. Eyes closed. And just take a moment to really land into our right. And just recognizing the sounds that arise around you. And helping to draw your awareness towards your practice. And from the awareness of the sounds that arise, just take a moment to note how does the physical body feel? Any areas of holding or tension? Body feels good. Similar inquiring to the condition of the mind. You feeling alert, you feeling energetic. With this presence of mind, we'll bring the attention upon the breath. Remembering you're more than welcome to remain just witnessing and experiencing the breath. But if all is well, mentally preparing for a few rounds of Kapalabhati, that intentional exhale, passive inhale, focusing entirely on the exhale. No pressure or force. Once you're ready, begin. Stop and just notice, not trying to control or force the breath, just note the body's reaction. And the breath almost returning to normal. All is well, mentally preparing for the second round. Maintain a relaxed face, no pressure or holding around the eyes. Once you're ready, begin.
stop. Bring the eyebrow awareness to rest at the eyebrow center. No control over the breath, just notice. Namaskar and Mudra, if comfortable, palms to press in front of the chest as you take a moment to set an intention or dedication for your practice. Release the hands, chin to chest, and a few gentle blinks, opening the eyes. Namaste. Well, so if you raise the knees up, thighs in towards your chest, you can have the clap of the shins, if it feels good, go for a wrist or a forearm, be as you are, a little practice or whatever, elevate one foot, feels good, lift the other. If you haven't already done so, begin to extend your breath, long and steady breath in and out through the nose, chin is drawn back a little, feel and breathe. Beautiful, you can remain as you are. But if all is well, you've no pressure on your lower back, you've no pressure on the shoulder or neck this evening. Perhaps you release the hands. Extend the arms, so being eventually in line with the ears and palms suppressed, then lightly gaze to the thumb. No pressure on the neck. Maintain and breathe. Feet can be grounded if required, if all is well, maintained up. If you feel like there's a challenge in the arms, a challenge in the neck or the shoulder, say extend the arms in line with the ear anywhere before. Little practice elevating it. Beautiful, exhale, release the hands. Release the feet if still elevated. Take your time, come into standing. Whichever way is best for you, come in all the way up and make your way towards the front of your mat. At foot's distance from the front of your mat, feet together, toes and heels to touch, come to Tadasana. Share the weight evenly on your feet in all directions. What does it feel like? What does it take? Hands to the sides of the body, shoulders a little rolled open. Gaze front, set the chin a little back. Take a moment to really ground, center, breathe. Mentally preparing for a few rounds of sun salutation. Breath the moment as best you can with no fight. You can breathe as much as you need to. Little practice coordinate. Namaskara mudra, namaskara asana even. Palms to press. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdhva Bahasta, extend the arms and lie with the air. Slight bend in the knee and the top of the pelvis, gentle back bend. Exhale, palms to face front, work from the hip. Knees as bent as you need to. Hands in line with the feet, fingertips are the palms, release the head. Inhale, the right leg back, a good distance, ground the knee on top the toes, gaze front. Exhale, top the toes, lift the knee. Left knee right, Dwe Pada, plank pose, maintain the breath out, knees, elbows closed, rolling down, thighs, belly, chest and forehead, roll the shoulders, hips slightly tucked up and back. Your next inhale, gaze front, raise to Bhujangasana on top the toes, exhale, top the toes, bend the knee, push the hip up and back, feet together, Bhujangasana, and maintain it here for a few steady breaths. One. Knees bent if needed, lengthen the spine. Two, spread the fingers. Three, four, five, inhale. Any variation, welcome. Step the right foot all the way front. Ground the left knee on top of the toes, gaze slightly front. Exhale, top the toes. Left knee, right feet together, fold in deeply. Good, bend in the knee. Arms in line with the ears, best you can. Inhale, feel them work all the way up. Pass the touch, top the pelvic, gentle back bend. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskar Asana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extend it. Slight bend in the knee, gentle back bend. Exhale, feel a mark from the hip, hands in line with the feet. Inhale, the left leg back, round the knee on top of the toes. Exhale, the way part of the plank pose. 
Maintain out knees, elbows close, smoothly rolling down. Shoulders roll, hips slightly tuck. Inhale, Bhujangasana on top of the toe. Exhale, Bhujangasana, hip up and back. And be here on feet. Knees straight down, chin maintain and my double chin. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Inhale the left. Take the time. Ground the right knee and tuck the toes, gaze front. Exhale, right knee, left, feet together, fall in deeply. Good bend in the knee, inhale, feel the mark all the way up past the touch, slight back bend. Exhale, Tarasana, Namaskarasana, inhale, exhale, inhale, extend it. Exhale, fall in front. Inhale, the right leg, round the knee and tuck the toes. Exhale, the way para. Maintain the breath out. Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhujangasana. Inhale, take the time. Right foot all the way front. Ground the left knee and tuck the toes. Exhale, fall in front. Inhale, Urdhvahasta. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extend. Exhale, work from the hip. Inhale, left. Exhale, the way para. Maintain the breath out. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhujangasana. Inhale, left. Take the time, all the way there. Ground the right knee. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, Urdhva. Exhale, Tadasana. But angle Spasana, feet shoulder distance, so a good distance between the feet, toes pointing straight ahead, hands on the hips, knees soft, take an inhale. And exhale, feel and walk from the hip. Keep the gaze a little front. Choose a depth that's appropriate for you, if it's within your limits, your Practice to release the hands, middle finger, nest and thumb, grab the big toes, inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze front. Exhale, below the navel and the belly draws, fold deeply. No dizziness, no pressure on the shoulder and the neck. Maintaining as you are, but if comfortable, next inhale, lift and lengthen. As you exhale one at a time, Harastasana, place the hands underneath the feet. Work towards the crease line of the wrist, and as you exhale, falling deeply. If you are choosing to place your hands underneath the feet, now recognize the reaction of the wrist. There's no pressure here, no additional force in the shoulder. Draw the belly. Next inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze slightly front. As you exhale, hands come to the hip, but don't force, take the time. Next inhale, raise the torso towards parallel, working towards. A bend in the knee, but can you shift and lean back to where your knee is over the ankle and maintain it here for a few breaths. Recognize are you flaring the ribs in an effort to lift the chest? Sternum's a little drawn back, so you're creating this length in the spine. Steady breath. Beautiful. Now we 
you can maintain centre grip all as well. Right hand, right hip. Left hand out to the edge of the right thigh. As you inhale, you create length in your, in your spine. You can imagine the crown of the head is drawing the torso towards forward. And as you exhale, get a slight twist to your right. Very comfortable. You can gaze over your right shoulder or gaze into the side. Any pressure on the neck, maintain the gaze down. Recognize the reaction of the knees. Are your knees leaning towards your toes? Can you shift the weight back? Knee over the head. Beautiful. Inhale back to center. This is good here. Left hand, left hip. Right hand always set out of the left thigh. As you inhale, you create that length as the crown of the head is stretching forward. And as you exhale, dropping the right shoulder, facing the chest a little towards your left. Recognize the reaction of the knees. Both knees are bent evenly. Feels good. Gaze left. Breathe. Super. Inhale smoothly back to center. Be here for a moment. Very comfortable. Extend the arms in line with the ears. Push through the feet as you inhale. Bend the knees more if required. Oh, I feel that. Work them all the way up. Lengthen it tall. Bending at the elbow. Clasping opposite wrist. Former elbow. Stirring his back as you exhale. Hinge to your right from the waist. Very comfortable. Push your hips a little to your left. The sternum maintains back, straight line across the shoulder, straight line across the hip. Inhale smoothly up, shoulders are free, sternum back, exhale to your left now, fold from the waist. No pressure on the hip, both legs working a little straighter if there's a bend in the knee, both knees are bent evenly. Very comfortable, push the hips a little to your right. Super. Inhale smoothly back, very comfortable, extend the arms straight. Shoulders down the back, palms to press. Start a little back as you exhale, fold to your right. Palms to press lightly, trying to avoid interlacing the fingers or the thumbs. Gentle connection, complete presence. Breathe. Inhale up, start a little back, exhale to your left. Noticing the difference between both sides, what's the response? If you find this very challenging in your shoulders or your neck, hands can be done with the sides of the body. A little practice you're working to maintain that extension, a beautiful open now through the right side of the body, starting at the hip. Inhale smoothly all the way. Lengthen it taut. Making sure your feet are at least shoulder distance, if necessary, even go a little wider. This feels good here, a good bend in the knee. Bend in the knee generously. All as well. Talk the pelvis under and keep this length in the spine. Talk the pelvis, maintain a good bend in the knee, and arms extend. Shoulder blades work down the back. Steady breath. No, this is good. You can maintain as you are. Knees bent, pelvis top. And maintain the spine a little round through the upper back if it feels good. Leaning back just slightly. To where shoulder, hip are working in a straight line. Pelvis still top, below the navel and abdomen. Rack up. Breathe really well. Gaze is slightly upward. Mind if you're not dropping your head back and looking up towards the ceiling. Breathe.
Next inhale, really lengthen it. Stand nice and tall, palms to face front. As you exhale, work from the hip. Pushing the bum a little back, in front of the hip. Sternum is a little drawn as you fold. Arms in line with the heels if you can, fold deeply. Grabbing towards the ankle or the shin as you inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze is front. As you exhale, work from the hip. Fold a little deeper. Mindful or not using the entire strength of the arms to fold front. Your fold is initiated and is held through below the navel, working from the hip line. Super. Your next inhale, lift the head, raise the chest a little. As you exhale, release your hands to the front of your feet. That's about shoulder distance. Then edge your feet together, toes and heels. You can have your hands shoulder distance apart. Palms or the fingertips. If you're making fingertips come into a cup shape, rather than splaying the fingers out and stretching through the joints of the knuckles, little cup shape. Feet together as best you can. Focus on a pointed ladle in front of you. Raise the right heel. Feels good here, you can extend the right leg back. Now you can build your practice from here. Thinking knee, left knee to be maintained over the ankle. All as well, raise the right foot a little. Very comfortable, raise it towards the edge as best for you. Playing around with your practice. We're maintaining the squaring of the hip, so mindfully or not raise the right hip up to almost stack the top of the left. We'll go there in a moment. But for now, maintain hip squaring. Then raise the right leg from there. No strain on the neck. Breathe really well. You're very comfortable to focus on the left big toe. Each exhale, pull a little deeper over the left leg. Raise the right leg a little higher. Now you can remain as you are in relation to where the placement of the hands are and you can work with squaring the hip trying to raise the right hip up to stack on top of the left. If all is well however, you can bring your left hand to be now in front of the left foot at that both foot's distance in front. Still good, you can start to open up the right hip, try to square the right hip to place on top of the left. So both hips will be now facing towards the right side of the room. The right hand can come to the hip and if it feels good you can extend the right arm up. Gaze can maintain down or gaze a little side. Focus on the point. Recognize your reaction. Where is the response? Steady breath. Exhale, smoothly roll in, releasing the right hand back to the mat, squaring of the hips, the left hand goes back to be a little wider, then release the right foot to meet the left. Take a moment, share the weight evenly between the feet, no pressure or force, when all feels steady, raise the left heel, extend the left leg back, you can be here with the toes drawn in, practicing keeping that right knee over the ankle and just lifting up a little, further practice however, little, little lift, and be here and feel. Feels good, little further. Feels good, little further. You're very steady, focus completely on your right big toe. Maintaining the chin in a mild double chin. Not jutting the neck front, jutting the chin front. Maintain length. Breathe. Now you can work with the hands in the placement they're in and just work with it softly opening up the hips to square towards your left. Left hip stacking on top of the right. But if it feels steady, you're playing around a little further with your practice, the right hand is now in front of the right foot. Fingertips are palm. Left hand can remain grounded. Feels good. Left hand to the hip. Or begin to extend it up. Little by little open up the left hip. The eventual intention is that the shoulders and the hips are facing towards the left side of the room. So your hips and shoulders are square. 
Maintain focus on the point. Feel and breathe. Next exhale, begin to square the hips down, releasing the left hand, right hand goes a little wider, left foot to meet the right, take the feet to be shoulder distance apart as you inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze front, as you exhale, round the palms, and walk your feet back into Adho Mukha Shonasana, the downward dog, good distance between the hands and the feet, torso is back towards the thighs, mind if you're not trusting of the ribs as you push back, keep the sternum a little drawn, hold the torso works back together. Feel and breathe. Spreading the fingers. Even weight is the invention tension between hands and the feet. No other rest is welcome than any woman. If it feels good, however, keep the toes where they are. Bring the heels together in a V shape. The gaze is front. One smooth step, as best you can, step the right foot front, inside edge of the right hand. If that's a challenge, you're welcome to ground the left knee, then step the right foot front. But if that's necessary, make sure you turn the left foot to that half of the other shape of the V. Square the hip, the right hip and the knees in a straight line. First variation, right hand, inside edge of the right foot, fingertips of the palm, and you can extend the left arm up towards the ceiling. If this is accessible for you, the right hand comes around the front and to the outside edge of the right foot, palm or fingertip grounding, and the arm is extended in line with the ear. Choosing which is best for you. Feel and breathe. Even weight between the feet. Square the hip. Softly rolling in. Left hand towards the left side of the mat. Right hand comes to the outside edge of the foot if you're not already there. Then pivot on the left toes and the right foot back to meet the left. Adam Mukha Shonasana. Maintain a good distance between the hands and the feet. Thinking below the navel, base of pelvic axis. We'll balance our practice. Keep the toes where they are. Bring the heels together in a V-shape. Whichever way is necessary for you. Left foot all the way in front. Checking in with the left hip. Often the hip will shoot out to the side. Can you swing the hip back into the center line of the body? Hip and knee in line. Choose your variation. If the left hand's on the inside edge of the foot, the right arm's extending straight up. If your left arm is on the outside edge, your left, your right arm even, is in line with the ear and you're trying to open up your chest in both asana. Both variations, share even way between the feet, steady breath. Super. Softly rolling, left hand outside of the left foot, right hand grounds. Pivot on the right toes, the left back towards the right, Adho Mukha Svanasana, maintain good distance, even way. Beautiful. This is good, with care, bring the shoulders over the wrists, and softly ground the knees as best you can, with the knees grounding underneath the hips. Shoulder over wrist, the knees in line with the wrist, toes in line with the knees as best you can, working towards. This feels good here. The intention is to maintain the hands where they are, so the middle finger is almost pointing front. And to externally rotate through the shoulders. To externally rotate through the shoulders, think moving from the bicep with the elbow point, the elbow pointing back, and the armpit pointing front. Maintaining this as best you can, and the arms working straight, and subtle movement through the upper back. 
through the rhomboids, muscles between the shoulder blades and the spine. As you exhale, allow your chest to drop down in between your shoulders without actively squeezing. As you inhale, push out. As you exhale, chest in between the shoulder. Inhale, push out. Maintain the arms externally rotated as best you can. Exhale, dropping down. Inhale, pushing out. Exhale. Can you keep the elbows straight? Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, smoothly push out. Tuck the toes, push the hip up and back. Take your feet further back. Back into Adam Mukhishwanasana, the downward facing dog. Good distance. Spread the fingers. Note the response in between the shoulder blades. Resting welcome at any moment, never fighting. Beautiful. This feels good. Two variations. You can be where we previously were just a moment ago, with the knees grounded in the Vajrasvasa set up. If it feels good, into the plank pose, straight line, heel to head. And we'll go for the same movement. So you're externally through, rotating through the shoulders as if your elbows are squeezing toward the midline of the body. And go for six rounds. I'll encourage you to go at your own count, slow and steady. Arms are maintained straight in the plank pose, our knees grounded. Exhale down and inhale, push up. After your six rounds, gently push back into Adam Mukha Svanasana. Next inhale, shoulders over the wrists. As you exhale, Grab the knees, or perhaps if you're familiar with Chaturanga, smoothly coming down, coming all the way down onto the belly. Untucking the toes, feet together, toes and heels to touch. Sliding the hands to either side of the chest, elbows squeeze close to the body. Working from here, but it's very comfortable, you can also interlace fingers behind the back. Base of pelvic and buttock muscle lightly engage as you inhale, smoothly raise up. Shoulders roll, no strain in the neck, any challenge in the neck. Drop the chin a little and be there and breathe. Exhale, coming down. Ground in the chin. If you're on the interlace, release the hands. And we'll all bring the hands to rest on the sides of the body. Feels good here. Take your feet to be hip distance apart or a little wider. Bending at the knee. Heeling towards the buttock muscle. Reaching back with one hand, grabbing the shin or the ankle. Reaching back with the other hand, grabbing the shin or the ankle. If you have any strain in the lower back, please don't force or fight. You could also play around with just raising the head to the chest. While being in this position, keeping the thighs grounded. If you're familiar at all as well, as you inhale, raise the head, raise the chest, and then raise the thighs. You're actively kicking the hands, kicking the legs even, into the hands, helping to lift the chest and roll the shoulder a little further. The bench and tension is balancing almost completely on the nail. Breathe and feel. Exhale, coming down. How softly can we land? Once you're fully grounded, release the clasp of the legs. Maintain the feet of hip distance apart or a little wider. Bring the hands to be in line with the chest. 
So please know you're welcome to push up and back in whichever way is best for you. Little practice, Bhujangasana, inhale, raise head, raise the chest. Feels good here, keep the elbows working towards the body. As you employ the hands a little, raise the chest a little further, roll the shoulder, neck is free, chin a little back. As you exhale, bend at the knee. Simultaneously tuck the toes and push the hip up and back. Adha Mukha Shottasana, the downward facing dog. Mindful of the slippy man. Bend the knees, gaze front. If you're comfortable, you can hop front. If necessary, you can walk front. Right knee, right wrist, shin diagonal. The left shin stacks on top. Then sitting back and taking the legs out in front. Dandasana, the stack pose. Legs extended out in front, sitting as tall as you can. Working with the right leg initially. Bending the right knee. The right foot can rest on the inside edge of the right leg, or the left leg even, and it can be grounded. If it's comfortable, however, raise the right foot up, and the outer edge of the right foot can rest on the left thigh. But the left leg remains nice and active. Toes draw back towards you, heel push away. Left hand supports the right foot, right hand supports the right knee, and it's gently releasing the knee up and down. This movement is coming from the hip. If there's any rigidity in the hip, and you go to an intense movement or try to force it in too much, a strain can present itself in the knee. So mindfully apply. And breathe. Super. You can be here, but if all is responding well, elevating the right foot up a little further, off the left thigh or up off the ground if that's accessible and allow the foot and the whole of the shin to come away from the body a little. Hands maintain the same position but we'll just change the direction so the right hip, the knee and the leg will come around the side of the body and across the front. The intention is feeling the movement from the hip. The spine is lifted. If this feels good, you pause here for a moment. You can maintain with this position, but if all is well, the right hand clasps the right ankle for a brief moment, extend the left arm straight. And the intention is placing the right foot into the crease line, or the, the right foot into the crease line of the left elbow, and the arm comes around from the front. Then the right arm comes around from the knee side. You can create a one side or both. And it's the same movement, it just brings the right shin a little closer to your chest. Can you sit tall? Where do you feel? Is there a difference? Beautiful. Pausing for another moment, being as you are, but if all is well, the left arm will remain where it is, and you're attempting to hook the right armpit over the right shin. So it brings the shin even a little closer. But then note the response, and it's the same movement. Spine lift, shin a little back. Softly come to rest with the movement. Releasing the hands from the variation you're in. This is good. Left, the right heel comes just below the navel and the intention is placing the top of the right foot on the left thigh with the knee working towards the ground. If the knee is elevated, this is okay. Just mindfully applying. If there's, this is very challenging or inaccessible, the right foot can be resting on the, on the next to the left thigh on the ground. All is well. I'm going for the first variation. Ardha Padma. As you exhale, fold a little deeply. Look at the left big toe. As you inhale, smoothly coming up. The intention here is folding the right leg behind, toes point straight back. If necessary, the knee can go wider. Little practice, it goes straight ahead. Left hand can be outside edge of the right hip, or left, left hip to keep you centered. Reach with the right hand towards left foot and fold deeply, triangle mukha. Inhale, smoothly back. 
Exhale, add the palma, choose the variation. Walks and left, coming tall. Inhale, back. Exhale, Triangle Mukha. Inhale, back. Exhale, low rush. Ardha Padma, move with your breath. Inhale, back. Exhale, Triangle Mukha. Inhale, back. Exhale, Ardha Padma. And be there for a moment. Focus on the left big toe. Not fighting to reach for the left foot. You can be anywhere before that. Recognize the response, particularly at the right knee. You're not fighting for depth. Each inhale is length. Chin is a little back. Exhale, fold. Inhale smoothly back. Exhale, triangle mukha as best you can. Fold deeply. If comfortable, reach the right hand to the outside edge of the left foot. Square the shoulder and fold from here. But never fighting for depth. Stay active through the base of the pelvic, below the navel. Keep the gaze a little front if that's comfortable for your neck, but don't fight for it. Breathe. Inhale, smooth back. If comfortable here, opening up your right leg now to 90 degrees. If this is challenging, you can return your right foot to be placed against the left thigh. I'm working from that position. All is well here, endeavoring to work towards the 90 degree. Left leg is active. Get a little twisted to your left or to your right, even you're twisting in the direction of the folded leg that's behind. Maintaining this twist in the chest and the torso as best you can. Left hand inside edge of the left leg, palm faces up towards the thigh or the calf muscle. We feel steady, right hand, right hip. Further practice, it's in line with the ear. As you exhale, fold to the left from the waist. Little by little, you're folding to the left. You're keeping the chest open, and that twist you made, you endeavor to create originally in the lifted position. The left hand is reaching for the left foot. If so, ground the elbow first, and the right arm is up and over. But you can be anywhere in between. Breathe. No strain in the neck, be side or down if necessary. Inhale, smoothly back. All the way up. Coming through the center. If your right leg is folded behind, bend the left knee also and place the left foot against the right thigh. If your right leg is front, come into a cross-legged position. Left hand, left side behind, right hand hooks over the left thigh, inhale, sit tall, sternum back, exhale, twist to your left. Feels good, gaze follows. Each exhale, a little twist. Inhale, back to center. If you're in the double fold, you can lean both hands either side of the left knee. Allow your right leg to straighten just a little bit behind you, so heel away from the bum a touch. Then raise the right knee and the right foot without leaning away from the leg too much as best you can, trying to stay at that center level. Then smoothly begin to bring the right leg around in front. Keeping the foot up, let right hand outside of the right hip behind, left hand in the same position on the left side. Bring the knees and the feet together. If necessary, feet are grounded, little practice. Feet and shins towards parallel. Feels good, raise one arm, still good, raise the other arm, still good, straighten the legs. But you can be anywhere in between. Don't fight for depth. Focus on your toes, knees bent if necessary. Breathe.
Beautiful. If you haven't already done, done so, bend the right knee, ground the right foot, bend the left knee, and ground the left foot. Then extend both legs straight. Back to Dandasana. Just lift this spine. Full balance of practice. Changing sides. Bend the left knee. Each side can be very different, so please note that. Left foot can be grounded inside edge of the right thigh. All is well. Outside edge of the left foot is resting on top of the right thigh, but the right leg remains rather active. Left foot is supported by the right hand, the left knee by the left hand. And that up and down movement. No pressure to achieve the equal depth on either side. Respecting the response that each can be different. Spine lifts, we breathe. Beautiful. Maintaining here but fall as well. You elevate the left foot and the leg up a little further. Allow it to come away from the body just to touch and change the direction of the movement across the front of the body and behind. But you're endeavouring to maintain the spine lifted and experience the reaction on the left hip. Where do you feel? Maintaining this movement but fall as well. Pause for a moment. The left hand supports the left ankle. Extend the right arm straight and place the left foot to be nestled in the crease line of the right elbow. Then it cradles around the foot side. Then the left arm comes around from the knee side. Or maybe you're just with one of the cradles. Then the same movement. The shin comes a little closer. The experience on the outside edge of the left hip wrapping around the glute. One more four. Beautifully pause here for a moment. If it's accessible for you, you intend to hook the left armpit over the shin. Shin comes a little closer and it's the same movement. Super. We'll come to rest with the movement. Feels good, just playing around. The left heel comes just below the navel and the intention is the top of the left foot to be resting on the right thigh. Then the knee works in the direction of the ground. If necessary, ground the left foot on the inside edge of the right thigh. Right leg's active, Ardha Padma. Exhale, fold a little deep. Inhale smoothly back. Right hand to the side, fold the left leg behind. Take a wide if necessary. Fold deeply, Triangle Mukha. Inhale back. No fight, take the time. Exhale, Ardha Padma. Where do you feel it? Inhale, back. Exhale, Triangle Mukha. Inhale, back. Exhale, Ardha Padma. Inhale, back. Exhale, Triangle Mukha. Inhale, back. Exhale, Ardha Padma. Inhale, back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And be there for a few breaths. Don't force for the reaching of the right foot. Your hands can be anywhere that it's required. You can have the shoulders relaxed. Shoulders are free and the neck is free of tension. Engage below the navel. If you can, heel is pushing in, jaws below the navel. Inhale, lift, chin back, exhale, fold. How active is your right leg? Does the foot drop out to the side? Does the foot point? Can you have toes working towards the ceiling and heel pushing in? Inhale back. Exhale, Triangle Mukha at the best of your ability. Don't fight for it. Fold deeply if you can. If you're at the foot, left hand reaches outside to the right foot. Then fold deeply with the shoulders square. No strain in the neck. Mindful you're not hyper extending by or compressing through the back of the neck by extending the chin front. Chin drop the middle. Gaze drop. Inhale smoothly back. 
If you're with the leg folded and it's comfortable and accessible, open up the left leg to the side, creating almost a 90 degree between the both, or returning to the left foot, close to the right thigh and having it grounded. Lift the spine no matter where you are, and get a little twist to your left. Endeavouring to maintain the twist, right hand inside edge of the right leg, palm up. Left hand to the hip, if it feels good, extend it along with the ear. Now exhale, fold to the right from the waist. Keep this open, little by little. You're not forcing to reach the foot off, we'll force to reach the foot, and we'll square the shoulders down, we'll be in a forward fold. Keep it at that side fold. Reach with the left arm up and over. Any strain on the neck, gaze yes, side or down. Feel and breathe. Beautiful inhale, coming back from the depth you venture to. Little twist. Exhale through the center. If your right, your left leg's folded behind, perhaps you can fold the right leg also, right foot on the thigh, if necessary, cross-legged position. Right hand, right side behind, no matter where you are. Left hand over thigh, inhale, lift, sternum, your ribs back. Exhale, twist to your right. Feels good, gaze is falling. Mindful if you're lifting and trusting the ribs to mimic extra depth. Keep the sternum back and twist through the spine. Chin a little draw. Inhale, coming halfway back. Hands either side of the right knee, straighten the left leg just a little behind you. Try to avoid leaning away from the leg too much. Spine is lifted, fingertips if necessary. Raise the left foot and the knee. Can you sweep the foot under, bringing the leg in front. Keep the foot up if you can. Left hand outside the left from behind. Same on the right side with the right hand. Welcome the right foot up. Your knees can be bent as you need to. Work towards parallel to the mat. You can alternate feet if required. Feels good. The full variation of Navasana. Focus on your toes. Breathe. Where's the chin? Superb, no fight. Next exhale, knees in towards the chest as you inhale. Just one rock back. Release and rest the end of your practice. Making all the necessary adjustments, release the legs. If you have the legs straight, knees bent. Any blankets or coverings are welcome. Taking a moment to readjust the body. To a position where you can truly feel that the body is held, the body is comfortable, the body is effortless. The eyes closed and the mouth closed. And when you feel that the body is beginning to arrive, Know that there's nothing more required of you. You can release all the weight of the body. Any unnecessary tension that may be still lingering. Any worry of the mind. Any tensions. Any narratives. Any conversations that occupy the mind that don't serve you. Can all be released into the earth beneath you. All being accepted. Never been come up. Safe in the knowledge the body is held, is secure. Allow your awareness to fall upon your breath. And on the inhale, perhaps the breath is traveling up the front of the body. And on the exhale, it descends down the back.
and perhaps it changes direction, inhaling up the back and exhaling on the front. And with each full cycle of the breath, it settles the body a little deeper into rest. All of that tension, all of that worry, all of the unnecessary conversations that occupy the mind are released a little further. And on the next exhale, when your breath begins to make the journey of descent down the front of the body, allow your awareness to continue to journey with the breath until it arrives above the space of the heart. And allow it to move into the heart space, taking up temporary residence here for a moment. So be with the heart. And from this space of the heart, from this open, from this welcoming space, allow the body to remain within the position of rest, of stillness, but allow your awareness to softly trickle out, to filter through the body, until it arrives at the borders of the stillness, the very edges of your body. Allow your awareness to transcend the borders that contain the body and to diffuse out into the environment that surrounds you and holds you. You welcome sound. Connect into the environment around you through sound. What vibrations do you recognize as sound? What can you feel upon the skin? The sensation around the eye. The breath that flows through the nasal passage, what can you smell? And what can you taste as your awareness wanders and swirls through the watery space of the mouth? You gather all of your senses. And from within that deep, earthy stillness and holding, note the body's potential for movement as you deepen breath. Make it a little fuller, a little more conscious. Feel how the breath awakens, it stirs the body. It stirs the toes and fingers up into the head and neck. The feet come softly back together. Right arm up and over, left hand to the belly. Fold the left knee. Roll to your right. Once you feel steady, push up to any seated variation. Eyes closed. Granting yourself one last moment of solitude to inquire into any difference at the start of your practice. Drawing the palms together, rubbing the palm, create a little heat. Placing the hands lightly over you. And extend the massage through the face. Hands come a small distance away from the eye and gently blink the eyes open, gaze to the past. Namaste. Thank you all so much. I hope you had a good practice. Thank you for your patience with the adjusting of the class time. If you like the later time, if the later time worked for you, if you prefer to the earlier in the afternoon, please do let me know in the comments below or private message. Have a good week. Hope to see you. I look forward to seeing you in your next practice. Thank you.